Okay, I'm getting ready to make a do a just the timing on an accord. Um, this is a 91 accord, I believe. Um, but I wanted to show you some stuff. If you look at the distributor, I got a line here for when I had to do some work. But um, see how the distributor, this section is kind of almost centered on that. On most Hondas, if you wanted to, let's say you're out driving around, your distributor broke, and somebody just ran out and brought you a new one. You'd want to center it up like that if you were to guess out in the field. And so I just want to show you what it should look like. Zoom in a little bit for you. And um, it kind of looks centered there. And then I'll show you the one I'm going to work on, what's wrong with it. Hold on. Okay, this is a, a car I bought used for my daughter. And uh, so what I want you to look at, I'm going to swing over a different angle. I had to rush that other shot because that car was leaving. Um, what I'll do is zoom in here for you. And knowing nothing else, if I'm looking at this distributor, see how it's all the way to one side? Um, and general rule of thumb is on a Honda that should be almost centered. And so just looking at this, if you're looking at a used car and you see something like that, something's up. I'm thinking the timing's probably not even close on this. Now that being said, this is not an OEM, at least it doesn't look like an OEM Honda distributor to me. Now, that being not OEM, they're not probably all the way at Honda specs. And so maybe it's got to be retarded that much, or I don't know if that's advanced or retarded. I think that's, I think that's uh, retarded. Anyways, uh, so what I'm going to do is set the timing on this, because this just doesn't look like it. I don't know what, you know, you never know what other people are thinking. Unless they did have to set it and it's just so off internally that it has to be like that. Anyway, so that's what I'm working on. And uh, in this video I plan to show you how I'm going to time that. Okay, so the first step i got to do when I'm going to time this is I need to get this engine to operating temperature. So the fans are up in this section. Hold on, I'm going to change this camera around so I can sort of see what I'm doing. Um, right here is your fans. And on the cord, you got two fans. Um, you kind of want to make your sure your fans are going to work. And if I remember right, I'm going to test this out. I think I can just turn on the AC, and that'll cause both these fans to come on. And if that happens, I know the fans are pretty much working for the most part. And so then I'll turn off the AC, and then uh, I'll let the engine idle so it warms up. And I want it to warm up to the point where it does trigger these fans. And then that tells me it's at a good operating temperature. At a good point where I can have a nice idle and stuff like that. To where I can adjust my timing on this. So I'm going to um, do that. Hold on. Okay, we're going mobile here. I got the car started. And I just wanted to show you what I was talking about with those fans there. Uh, hopefully it's coming up on camera. Basically I'm trying to show you here is the fans are not spinning right now. So... What I do is I come inside the car, and on the, this is 90 Accord L or EX, and uh, so it's running obviously. So you just put your, uh, put it all the way to cool, and you gotta make sure that you actually turn uh, your fan on so it's blowing some air. And then I just put it on the center deal, it really doesn't matter that part. But you do need to have your fan on for this to work. And then, if you put it on recycle, recirculate, um, you'll hear it'll, it's like a f stronger AC kick in, and you'll, I don't know, you just have to try that. You can try this and this, and you'll tell the difference. So what I'm, the biggie on this is I'm going to push the AC button, and the green light came on, and I can feel the AC already. That means it's pretty healthy. And what that did for us is if I come over here, and you look in there, hopefully this is showing up, um, the fans are spinning. So that does a couple things for me. That it's a good way to test your fan motors on the cheap instead of having to wire them all up like on a Civic. Um, it's kind of weird the way it does that because you're running the radiator and the condenser, but that's just the way the cords are set up. So I just turn off the AC and I come back out. And uh, again, I hope this shows up on camera, but the uh, fans are not spinning anymore. So now I know the fans do work and there's a pretty good chance that they'll spin up when the system comes up to temperature. Let's see what the gauge is reading at now. See if that'll come up there. 
So it's get, it's already close to operating temperature, and so I'll just let the fans kick on, and then my them I'll know it's good. Um, let me show you where that door unlocks. Let me unlock the doors here. Uh, I'm not used to. Um, oh, here it is. I use DXs a lot, not by necessary choice, but uh, DXs are a little bit lighter. So I'm not used to having power stuff. Um, but what I want to show you here is on this side. I'm gonna have to locate it, but somewhere there's a, should be a panel that pops out, and I'll have to find that. And that should be where your jumper cable's at. I don't want to sit there. I'm gonna have to get under there and find it. So I'll show it to you as soon as I find it. Okay, I found it. So I'll show you how to do this. So the carpet's usually in here. So I just pull back the carpet, and then. Uh, by the way, that's where your ECU and your uh, automatic transmission this is an automatic. So your automatic transmission control computer is going to be in, underneath this plate and also your ECU if you ever need to find that. And then I took out the kick panel, I'll show that in a second, but here's the cord. This should be the right one. I see a red and a green wire, so I'm pretty sure that's it and it's got a blue connector. Although. It looks like it's got male pins in it, which is weird. I was expecting female pins, but I'll double check that. And that should be the jumper to put it in the uh, in per or, uh, service mode. And here's this piece is right up in here, kind of sat under there. Sorry about that. Kind of give you an idea. It serves like that. It's got clips on it, and you want to make sure these clips come all the way out. Um, and they just like, see there's a slot where one went in. So you just put your hand there and pop them out. And then and there's one back there and there's probably one up top. And so when you, you want to make sure you get your clips out when you pull that out. Because sometimes they'll stick in there and you want to pull it out if it does. And then also, um, I like to put silicone spray on them. And that helps them seat back in and makes it a little bit easier next time you got to pull that out. Anyway, so I'm going to verify that that's the jumper, but I'm almost certain it is. And um, then I'll show you how you can check that. One thing, if you look, um, well you can't probably see it, but there is no check engine light. And if I jumper that and turn the car on, without starting the engine, just the key ignition on, um, you should get a check engine light. The, the check engine light should come on and stay on. Um, and I'll show you that as I go along. Yeah, I figured I'd show you a little couple side bonus stuff on the way here. Uh, again, this is a used car that I bought. Um, if you buy a used car, I highly recommend you get what they call um, a leak down test done and also a compression test. What that will tell you is your cylinders are good, and that's the main killer to any motor, well, especially Hondas, is if you got a leaky cylinder um, or get bad compression, I would just walk away from that deal because that's going to be like a $350 repair job. and. Uh, you can buy a new Honda engine, uh, uh, you know, from off the street for about that much. So, um, but something I wanted to let you hear. I hope the mic's usually pretty good on this, so you can hear a slight, kind of like ticking noise. It's the higher pitch ticking noise, and that's telling me that it probably needs to have the valve lashing done. So maybe I'll make a video of that later on. Uh, what that is is the rocker arms uh, hit the cam, overhead cam hits the, uh, opens and closes the valves, and those need to be adjusted over time. And so the little ticking, tick, 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 really high pitch one, um, that's usually that sound there. And it doesn't sound that bad, actually. I've heard a lot worse. But I do hear sort of like a, a, a valve ticking, too. Um, like a, a lower, you probably hear it, kind of a, sounds like a vacuum leak and that's probably something like it almost sounds like the PVC valve or something but it's not quite there so I'll try to locate that um, but that sounds kind of odd anyhow just want to um, kind of hopefully this picks up so you can hear what a uh, valve lashing job sounds like with just by listening to it um, still waiting for these fans to kick on they haven't kicked on uh, anyways, so I'm gonna pause the camera out here and we'll come back. So I got my uh, stethoscope out, and these things are pretty neat. 
A um, couple of neat tricks you can do. You can listen on here. And uh, I can hear the uh, the valve lashing ticking up here. That verifies that for me. Another couple things you can do is if you're ever trying to troubleshoot your uh, fuel injectors, you should hear ticking on your fuel injectors as they're opening and closing. And so that works. But what was bugging me is that high, that low pitch clacking sound. I don't know where it's coming from. So I was like probing this. I thought it was this, but it's not this. And then I touch this and I can hear it. And, uh, and then also it went off when I was kind of like touching down here. So that tells me that that low pitch clicking noise and I can hold this and feel it. And sometimes, as if I hold it just right, I thought I could make it stop. But I can put my hand on there and feel it. So now I know that's uh, coming from that sensor back there and I gotta look up to see if it's supposed to be that loud or not or what's going on with that. Anyway, so I just want to show you the cool stethoscope things. I think I got this one at Harbor Freight or something. They're just a couple bucks. And they come in handy and you can do some pretty neat troubleshooting and it helps you locate noises. Anyway, so still waiting for the engine to heat up. I could probably, probably do this a little bit. Try to heat it up a little bit faster, but uh, getting close. It should be getting close to operating temperature. Um, anyways, so that's all I got for right this minute. So it's almost up to operating temperature, but I wanted to show you my check engine light test thing real quick. So this is ah. there we go. Um, this is sorry about the beeping. But if I just turn the engine not to start, the check engine light, hopefully that showed up on camera. Let's see. I think you can see that. Oh, it does stay on. Do I guess the, oh, that's because I got a jumper. Hold on for a second. Okay, this is normal operation. Still recording, yeah. Anyhow. So the check engine light will come on and then go off. And that's how your car starts normally supposed to work. And so what I got is I got this little red jumper and I'll show you where that goes. Boy, that beeping's annoying. Going to go hand held on this. So over here, here's a better close up of this jumper thing. It's just a, you know, a blade connector. And if you look in here, this is kind of like mail pin sticking out. Kind of tricky with one hand, but I'm just gonna stick that in there. And then, now watch how it behaves when I start it up. Hopefully I couldn't see if that other shot was getting the check engine light, but you'll definitely get a good shot here. So, now when I turn the ignition, see the check engine light, the yellow one over there? See how it stays on? That tells you that it's in uh, service mode. I can even start the engine. And right now, because it's in service mode, it, the ECU, that silver box I was showing you down there, uh, the computer of the car is not trying to tell the car to um, like advance the timing for it. So that's why this car is probably even running, unless it's so aftermarket and so off that it needs to be like that, that um, the, uh, um, the computer will tell, try to negotiate the timing if it's really bad on its own. So anyway, so I just want to show you, that's how you could uh, jumper that, and that, that seems to be working really good using those blade connectors. And so I'm going to turn off the engine there, and then um, I'm going to get my timing light out, and I'll show you that. Okay, so I figured I'd show you how to hook up my timing light. Um, 
or any timing light. So you just hook up your uh, positive lead to your positive battery. Uh, cords or Hondas are pretty nice and you can usually spot grounding straps pretty easy. So I just put that to a grounding point and then uh, your uh, spark plugs are one, two, three, four. You want to put this on the number one. Hopefully it's not too hot there. And on some, I've seen, I thought there used to be an arrow. Sometimes check your timing light, make sure there's no arrow that tells you what direction it's supposed to go. Um, I don't think they do that anymore, but anyhow, so I just clap that, clamp that on. And on an Accord, um, this model says it's a F22A4. Um, I think this is for automatics. Ooh, it's kind of hot in there, should be wearing gloves. Don't burn yourself on the exhaust manifold. Anyways, I'm taking this plug out, and we'll zoom in here. Hopefully this is showing up on camera. See, that's your timing mechanism there. Um, there's like a little V-shaped deal in there. Also, when you're getting a car, make sure you got these plugs. I've seen cars without them, and that's not a good place to be throwing dirt into your car. So make sure your plugs are in there. Anyhow, I'm going to shine the timing light on there. And there's several marks. Let's see if I can get a better angle over here. The darn upper radiator hose is almost like right in the way, so I'm hoping it's going to work out well. Let's see here. On that wheel, um, if I could hand turn it over, you're going to find uh, three marks grouped together and then uh, another mark off behind the three marks. When I say, so it'll be three marks like here and then a mark back here. Now the one back here should be red and the three marks here should be white and you want the center white one. Now when I start the engine obviously they'd be flying by so fast you couldn't see it but that's where your timing light goes on because it flashes right at the precise time that the number one spark plug fires um, it, you should be able to see just that mark on the flywheel so it's kind of an optical trickery thing the way those timing lights work. So my timing lights kinda of old I should get a new one and it's not too bright so hopefully it's not too dark out here and I don't know if I'll be able to show the timing on there, but we'll see what happens. So I'm going to start the engine now and then flash the timing light down there. It's kind of hard doing this one-handed too. Alright, before I uh, start this, I'm going to loosen my distributor cap here just to loosen these bolts here. And um, the one in the back here is kind of hard to get at. And what I do is I take a little screwdriver and see these clips right here these ones are backwards if you see a clip going onto a metal tab you do it the opposite way of all the other Honda clips so you put a little screwdriver in there and you lift it up and that'll release it so I'll release these two clips so I can get a socket and an extension back there and loosen this back one then you want to make sure this can rotate and you just want it just snug enough to where you can rotate it, but it's not going to go flying around on its own, which is going to be kind of tricky. So I'm thinking uh, it should be more centered. Actually, what I'm going to do is uh, just snug this top one so and use my wrench to do the adjustment. Um, so next you got to start the engine and start the timing light process. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this on camera, but essentially I'm going to shine the timing light um, down that hole there. Okay, I'll give this a shot, but I don't think you're going to be able to see it. Ah, oh, shoot. Ground clip popped off. Anyways, you shine the light in there. I don't think that's going to show up on camera. I'm just going to take my wheel off here. Zoom back out. And uh, if you look at, I'll get it at the same angle I had it before. Here you can see it pretty good look at my distributor now it's like it's much more centered it almost is immediately centered there that just looking at it that looks that looks correct and uh, 
my white marks were worn off, but the center one, when you're shining the light on there, you'll see uh, three deals, and the center one actually sticks out a little bit farther than the other two, so you can see it with your timing light a little easier. And uh, so that's uh, essentially what I did is I adjusted the timing. I need to go back and tighten all these, uh, these back down. Not super tight, just snug. I'll go look up, see if there's a Torx back on there. I'll let you know what that is. And uh, then I'm going to put my, might as well do that right now. Uh, i got to put some gloves on so I don't burn myself in the exhaust manifold. But don't forget to put your plug back in. This is important to keep the dirt and stuff out of there. Anyhow, so, whoops, you couldn't even see any of that. What I was showing you is uh, this plug here. You want to make sure you put that back in. I'm going to put some gloves on because that exhaust manifold is pretty hot and I don't want to burn myself on it. Anyway, so, um, again, just get the temperature operating high. I never did wait for the fans to come on, but it's pretty much normal. Um, the uh, temperature gauge is in the middle. And uh, then you just loosen these bolts and rotate that forward or back to change the timing marks on there. And we get where you want, just snug that top bolt down, and then we can finish tightening it up later. So I'm just going to shut the car off now and then uh, remove those... Uh, remove that check jumper plug. Then I'm going to restart the car and make sure I don't have a check engine light, which I shouldn't have. Alright, um, I just took a Sharpie marker and I marked the top of the distributor. So if you ever take it off, um, you have a reference point, you can just take it off, put it back on. And then the torque on these is uh, 16 foot pounds, which isn't that much. And I like to torque my stuff because most of the time people over tighten Honda stuff. And you gotta remember all this stuff, most of the stuff is aluminum. Get myself a little extension there. And so a lot of people end up over tightening this stuff. And that's causes a lot of leaks and all kinds of weird stuff. Anyways, uh, so that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna finish tightening those down. And then uh, start it up and check for an uh, engine check light. And don't forget to, if you disconnect these, put these back on the clips there. Okay, this is where we see if all the hard work paid off. Put my uh, key in there. See that check engine light comes on. Went off, that's a good sign. Start her up. Start right up. Let's go see how it sounds. It sounds better inside already. Uh, you can hear the, yeah, you can hear the, uh, lap attack. You know what, it's interesting, it got rid of that high, low pitch. So I don't know what that, I gotta look and see what that valve does. It's probably an air bypass thing. So because the timing is off, it's probably making that thing work to death back there. It sounds better, I can only hear the, um, the valves need to be uh, readjusted there, the valve gapping. I think it sounds better. Get in here. Yeah, I can't believe that got rid of the, um, unless this only did it when it was cold. I'll have to follow up with that, see what's going on. But to me it sounds better. <laughs> and like I said, you can see the difference. Look how much uh, more centered up that is than it was when I started. So that's a good tip if you come across a Honda and you see that. All the way to one side or the other, it probably is off. Somebody just threw it on there, didn't know what they were doing, or didn't know how to set it. And the computer will compensate for it. And the, you can do a lot of stuff wrong, and a Honda will still run. <coughs> but if you do it right, and it runs even better. Anyways, uh, hope this video helps you guys out. If, uh, if you like it, please select like. And if uh, you want to see more Honda videos and videos on all their miscellaneous stuff, just uh, Select subscribe and you'll get updates when I make videos. Alright, talk to you guys later.